good soup. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. We are here to preview the final episode of Game of Thrones Season 8, which is also the final episode of Game of Thrones, the television series, the series finale on Sunday. Obviously, it's been a mixed season, to put it mildly, overall, but it's still a bittersweet farewell to one of the most influential shows of the last decade. Yeah, I still haven't really fully grasped this is the last episode we'll ever see. <laughs> Even when I was rewatching last episode, at the end, for the preview for this one, it's the final episode of Game of Thrones. I'm like, oh, shit. Right. It feels like there's just so much story that could be told after the ending. So we'll just have to see how they wrap it up, if it does feel definitive. But it feels like one of those shows where the world just kind of continues after the ending that we get. And we yeah. can assume what happens. But I'm still looking forward to it. I was mixed on the previous episode, and I've had my issues with the season. But I'm ready. I'm ready to say goodbye. Although, yeah, not really, actually. And before we begin, we'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description box below. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. Skillshare is an online learning community dedicated to helping creators perfect their craft. They have over 25,000 classes in design, videography, video editing, photography, and much more. We're always getting questions from people on how to make your own YouTube channel. It can be a little overwhelming for beginners to start their channels, and that's why Skillshare is so essential. It's an online learning community that provides you the opportunity to develop the necessary skills for becoming a successful online content creator. The courses that we would like to highlight today are some of the beginner classes in Adobe After Effects, Adobe Photoshop, and Final Cut Pro. In my opinion, these are the big three of online content creation, and Skillshare has a multitude of classes for each individual software. Even having a basic understanding of these three softwares will give you a significant advantage when beginning your channel, and as you develop your skills, you can keep using Skillshare to learn new ways to build your channel and brand. And remember, Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description box below, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. So click the link and start developing your skills today. Yeah, this trailer was actually uncharacteristically short for the other preview trailers that we've had throughout Season 8, and really for all the seasons. And I like that, because it's the finale, we're going to get the hour and 20 minutes, you don't want to give anything away, because there are some questions here. And the first shot that we have is John and Davos kind of surveying the damage of King's Landing, and we spoke about this on our episode review. Davos is going to have a huge problem with this. Obviously, John is as well, but you burn one kid, Davos is pissed. You burn thousands... Come on, man. This I don't even know what he's going to do. He's got to do what he did to Melisandre like times a million, right? Right, but it's not even Daenerys who doesn't believe in gods. She just believes in herself. you got to imagine he's going to be all of them are the big three, right? That's left John, Tyrion, and Davos. Well, it's funny because Dav right, Davos was in a position of power, though, mm -hmm. where he could make sure that Melisandre would be either killed or exiled from the north. I wonder if they just all fear her now, if they don't stand up to her. I think if it's going to be one person, it would be John because he's always stood in the face of absolute evil, and even against all odds, he's fought back. Mm -hmm. So when he says to Sansa, I fought against worse than Ramsay Bolton, you see the Night King, it's like, well, I have i don't think I fought worse than this woman. <laughs> um, it's so weird saying that, right? It, yeah, man. But <laughs> it's weird, but it's not, because she just went for it, dude. So now I'm all on the train of, she gotta die. <laughs> Somebody gotta get her. It's, yeah, that first interaction between those three characters, mainly John and Tyrion, with Daenerys is going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. And, like, what's the setting? What is Daenerys like? Embraces it. She's yeah, got she yellow has to, eyes. Right? Oh, yeah. The yellow Anakin eyes. <laughs> she has to, right? She kind of, like, I don't know if she regrets. Like, what what is she going to be feeling when we first see her in this episode? That's going to dictate a lot of what we see with these character interactions. You got to imagine she's going to ask people to swear fealty. 
They're going to be frightened, too. Tyrion, we have seen Tyrion be increasingly frightened when talking about or talking to Daenerys, and Sansa pointed that out a couple episodes ago. Yeah, and we have Tyrion in this shot looking up at the Red Keep. He's just looking up at the destruction, and that was probably my favorite reaction in episode five. It's when she first flies away and he realizes what she is going to do. Peter Dinklage is one of the best actors, and we talked about this, the nonverbal acting, the way that you're able to express emotion. That was pure fear on yeah. his face. That was fear that he could not hide. Just walking through the destruction as well. The ashes are everywhere. Everything has been destroyed. It's going to be something that triggers a very powerful emotional response from these characters. They've as much horror as these characters have witnessed. I don't think they've ever seen anything like this. John might be the closest, the massacre at Hardhome, but that was a supernatural threat. This is somebody that you loved. Yeah. John didn't love the Night King. <laughs> So, this is your girlfriend just obliterated a city. <laughs> and your aunt. Yeah. It's a weird situation all around. And this shot is interesting, too, with um, Arya. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of speculation. Green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes. Green eyes are Daenerys, and she's going to be the one who kills her. And in this shot, she looks infuriated. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's going to be Arya, because we kind of said the same thing with Cersei that... Too obvious? Well, no. It's like giving her two, I guess... Two bodies? Yeah, but like the main ones, I guess, now with Daenerys. Still, still weird to say. Um, but yeah, I think it might be, I don't know, we'll talk about it, I guess, after. I think it's still maybe John, but Arya is the perspective we got from on the ground, like in King's Landing. She doesn't have that connection to Daenerys, so it's not going to be as, I guess, heartbreaking from a personal standpoint, but just all the atrocities she witnessed seeing that mother and child and them burning, her not being able to save them and stuff like that and just utter chaos surrounding her is going to inspire a lot of hatred and need for revenge because I know the Hound said to her last episode, like, don't let this revenge consume you. And it's not a personal revenge, but it's kind of like a honor-bound Starkian type, I need to do this. Yeah, I mean, in the book, she was killing people for deserting the Night's Watch. (laughs) so i think after what she witnessed that's why she was there everybody was saying why is Arya in king's landing was her going to kill cersei just to put her in this position to kill daenerys after witnessing all of that carnage and i think it was and obviously she has the faceless abilities i think she pulls them out in this season finale if you're going to wrap up the show it's give each these each of these characters a moment with the the new abilities and the characters that they have become she appears to daenerys if she appears to Daenerys as somebody that she knows using her faceless abilities, it kind of shocks. Because how do you get close to her? You don't. Right, yeah. <laughs> she still that's has fucking be... Drogon, man. She's got Drogon. She's got the Unsullied protecting her. I think we might get some Bran, man. A little Bran Warg and Drogon action. That's the only way, right? Because if you think about what she just did to King's Landing, what's Jon and the remaining Northern Force going to do? Obviously, we're going to get some Sansa in this episode, and she's going to play a huge part. And you got to think Bran, right? That's the only way. John's not going to kill Drogon. He's going to be a dragon slayer. Maybe he likes, like, oh, I can... Well, people have talked about maybe he gets Drogon to change his allegiance. That Drogon just becomes John's dragon. But it's also a matter of the citizens of Westeros are never going to accept a ruler who has a dragon after what just happened. Especially the citizens who are left of King's Landing. They'll be terrified. There's not really much you can do about it because I'm not sure anybody can really slay a dragon. But you even go back to Aegon the Conqueror, man. He didn't do stuff like this. I mean, he took over the Seven Kingdoms, but he was killing soldiers. And obviously he burned Harrenhal and he burned Harren and all his sons alive. But he was mostly attacking people that were attacking him. This is unlike anything that's ever happened in Westeros. So they're just not going to sit back and learn to accept Daenerys as a ruler or Jon if he gets control of Drogon. I like that idea that Bran somehow finds his way in there. Maybe he sacrifices himself to destroy Drogon. That would be a a really poetic, tragically poetic ending for him because the first thing the Three-Eyed Raven said to him, yet you will fly and you'll die. What? What was that? <laughs> Leave that part out. But if he doesn't do something of importance in this episode, I don't want to say it was a waste. But Bran? But just Bran overall. The dude went through hell yeah. becoming the Three-Eyed Raven. We watched that dude do that shit, go through that journey for four seasons, man. You'd have to think. You just said it, right? It would be not. You have. To, we have to see the characters what they've learned culminate in this episode. So that would make sense from what you said. So I think we might. That's the only. What, like they don't have any scorpions. Like in fucking in the shed <laughs> in the back, like in storage. And if they did, they probably all fucking burned down. Yeah. There's. How would he even kill him? Just fucking. Bang him. his head against the wall. <laughs> Warg him and just fucking 
drown him. Drown him or just make him stand still while everyone just stabs him. <laughs> <laughs> get him, get him. That actually would be horrifying to watch. Yeah. Bran drowning in his wheelchair while he's drowning Drogon. D&D, let us... <laughs> A and B, come on. I love this shot of the Dothraki screamers. Where did they come from? Who knows? They just survived, right? Yeah. The last of the Dothraki. I assume the what, the shot we got outside of the gates and that force that was all around King's Landing, kind of like a siege type. Right, and she's still got the Unsullied. We see a couple shots here where it looks like the Unsullied are standing in the ashes of King's Landing. <laughs> Man, this is just brutal every time you look at it. I know. Literally, the Queen of Ashes. I think she forgot that she came here not to be the Queen of Ashes. <laughs> One of my favorite memes of <laughs> the past week. It's still taking me a bit to kind of accept this because <laughs> I don't hate, like I said. on the Remember re- when she locked up her dragons because they accidentally killed a child? <laughs> we said it on the reviews. I don't hate the concept, but I wish we had some more in between maybe Missande dying and this eventuality, I guess, of her becoming the Mad Queen because I would have liked to have seen maybe if it was a 10-episode season, obviously it's impossible to include that when you constructed the six episodes, but they dragged it out little and they had a slow uh, slow descension into madness for Daenerys when we got to see her get increasingly paranoid. It would have, would have uh, taken away from the surprise, I guess, because we'd have seen it coming, but I think it would have made it more heartbreaking and it would have had the same effect that when she's doing all this to King's Landing, it's not terrifying and horrifying. horrifying. It's more sadness and betrayal and heartbreak for this character, seeing her just go crazy over time last couple episodes we got a couple scenes and that was it yeah that decision that she makes when she's looking at the bells Mm -hmm. that should have been us as the audience saying don't do it don't do it we know what you want to do please don't do it we were still saying don't i was was still saying don't do it i wasn't i was sitting there like what's going on they just won what is she all upset about oh she's gonna go kill sir oh no yeah (laughs) that that's just how i read it okay because um, it just what I and you always say that you like the concept. I I don't, but I'm not complaining about that. If that's the route that they wanted to go, if George's intentions, then so be it. I just I just never have been a fan of Daenerys becoming the Mad Queen. That's just me personally. I mean, you I, can point to times where it's kind of like gray, like oh, did she make the right decision? And she right, like, I don't her mind that impulse is getting the better of her. But I would have liked to seen that. I wanted to see that turn into that. We didn't get that middle where we actually see it go. It kind of just happened where if they would have led up to that a little bit better in my mind, it would have made for a more impactful character change in my my view. And she dies in this episode, right? That's like the hap- well, not the happy ending because it's still going to be heartbreaking to see John, let's just say, kill Daenerys, a character we've seen for almost a decade now. And it'll be heartbreaking for John to have to do that. Even after Daenerys did this, it's still going to be an emotional, smaller moment for those two characters. Also, a scenario where Daenerys wins and she's just alone. And you like the last shot is her just fucking crazy eyes, Mad King type, just sitting on the Iron Throne by herself. If there is still an Iron Throne, he's got to check up on that. You got to imagine Sansa's is going to have an episode. Right. Well, that's the other conflict there. Daenerys saying to John, what's up with your sister? Do you think she misses us? Should we go visit her? <laughs> what's up with the North? you think they'll bend the knee now? As it pertains to Daenerys winning, I don't see that happening. I think Jon Snow is going to somehow, Daenerys is going to die, whether it be Arya, who I do think dies in this final episode. Imagine she died trying to kill Daenerys. She doesn't get to her, and that's what really sets Jon off. I think Jon ends up on the Iron Throne. Daenerys is dead. Somehow Drogon has to die, or maybe he just goes to Old Valyria. It's like, I'm tired of this. <laughs> going with my babies. John ends up on the throne, grants the North independence, Sansa becomes Queen of the North. Bran, I hope he has something to do. I like your theory about him getting into Drogon somehow. That's, that, that's how they defeat him. Tyrion, I think, survives, and it's John on the Iron Throne, once again put in a position that he did not want, but he begrudgingly has to take because he's the best man for the job, and him and Tyrion try to rebuild what Daenerys destroyed, and what the War of the Five Kings has destroyed. I mean, they've destroyed this country. It's not just Daenerys. It's well, it's a- going to be a somber victory. Every time we've imagined someone taking the Iron Throne, it's like, oh, we've won the throne. Daenerys got her birthright back. Stannis won the Iron Throne. Rob came into King's Landing and killed Joffrey, and he won. It's And Jon is such an obvious choice for the Iron Throne. It was supposed to be a throne. victory, yeah, yeah. but it's not going to be. No. And right. I think that's kind of the bittersweet ending we were told we were going to get. If I, I, I think you're wrong about Tyrion. I think he's on the chopping block. You think he, it, Daenerys kills him? He did betray her again. Free Jamie. He needs to run away. <laughs> I'm sure. Think he'll just admit it? Well, it's like, didn't you guys capture Jamie? Who are the unsullied protecting him? We were. What happened? Tyrion told us to leave. We went back. He was gone. 
Sansa, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Betrayed John? by Sansa again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really the characters that are left, right? Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Really wanded down here. So I think if that happens and Tyrion dies, then I could see maybe if Jon does take the throne or whatever is in place for the ruler of the the Westeros, I guess. It would be nice to see Davos, like, Hand of the King, like he was for Stannis, something along those lines. Is there any chance that, because we didn't see her face, we have this moment where she walks out, we see the Unsullied, and she's overlooking the damage. Is there any chance that she shows remorse for what she did? Where just that even destroys her more. Where it's a Darth Vader redemption at the very end. I think... But it doesn't come full circle. At the very end, she's still crazy, but the, we just get a, a hint of that old Daenerys inside of it. Because it feels like, if you're going to make her the villain, I almost would like to have seen this play out for three or four more episodes. Yeah. Just for the finale, evil Daenerys, I would have... You know, if you're going to go evil Daenerys, give me, give me like four episodes of this. I think the bridge to Mad Queen could have been done better, and I agree with that. I would like the scene post Mad Queen if she does, if she is just fully gone now, which you would have to assume so, because I don't think a normal person could live with themselves after doing that. Like after it happened, and she kind of comes down, and she's back to being who she was, who we've seen throughout the years. Then there's almost no choice but for you to embrace it, I guess. And I think there could be a moment too, especially if it's John. And it's a very intimate, small moment where John, the only thing left for him to do is to take her out. She kind of reverts back to that character and the love she had for John, kind of like we've seen with Cersei in a way, where yes. Cersei sees Jamie and everything just comes back to her at that moment because she's seeing everything she's we're seeing everything that she strived for just literally fall apart. And Jamie's right there, probably the person that she wanted to be when she's all alone after Kyburn's dead and she's just wandering aimlessly in this destruction. I think the biggest problem I have with Mad Queen too is like, it kind of overshadowed a lot of last episode, especially to Cersei and Jamie, and we really didn't even, even touch on that in our review. No, yeah. I just want to say, I mean, Cersei Lannister and Jamie Lannister, two of the best characters in the show, two of the best performances by those actors, Nikolai Casawaldo and Lena Headey. I know the focus earlier on in the show was, for the Lannister perspective was Tyrion, but it really, by the end, it's those three that really almost led the show in a way. Two of the most important people of the show, and it's weird when you still have Jon and Daenerys, probably the two biggest parts of the show, but you kind of look at all of them as the main five right there. And also Rory McCann as the Hound. Yeah. One of the best arcs. I think the most complete arc of the show. I think that was the best ending that they gave to any character. Ends where it began. He dies pushing his brother into the fire, whereas he was pushed as a child into the fire. So it was it was a great arc overall for that character. He's a fan favorite. Great performance by Rory McCann. Perfect casting, even though they did age him up a bit. So say farewell to him. And as frustrated as I was with the previous episode, I'm still very interested to see how these interactions are going to go. Because this was such a this monumental moment for the show overall and for Daenerys as a character. It's just... <laughs> what are these conversations going to be like? So the tension between all of these characters is, Teddy always says you can cut it with a knife. It's going to be through the roof in this episode. You expect to see any sort of, I guess, negative backlash from people that are still loyal to Daenerys, like a Grey Worm? No, I don't think so. Yeah. The people she has loyal to her are Unsullied, who never break faith, and the Dothraki, who are so down with what just happened. <laughs> Are you kidding me? They're loving it in this shot. We really don't get to know most of the Unsullied army, but kind of Grey Worm is the face of that. And the way we've seen Grey Worm develop from when he's first introduced to Daenerys to who he is now, even before the Long Night happened, he was talking to Masande about going home with her to North, or once I win the war for Daenerys, we can have our own life together. You seem, they're seemingly trying to break apart from that, and they did win the war for her. Yeah, but so, uh, that all died with Masande. I know, but there's... And not a, I don't think the other Unsullied have girlfriends. Well, I'm just saying, just that, like... They're a unique character. <laughs> it's in a unique position to uh, develop that relationship. Yeah. But I'm just no, saying, I don't like, think they're... so. I don't think they're getting into that. I mean, uh, Grey Worm, no, I think Grey Worm dies defending Daenerys. I think he's he was just totally on board with what she was doing. I think we get a Grey Worm John one-on-one. Oof. That would be awesome, right? So it is the end, the final hour and 20 minutes of Game of Thrones, and I'm going to do my best to enjoy it. I hope it's a satisfying ending. <laughs> That's all I can really hope for. I think it's fair to say I liked the last episode more than you did, even though I did have my problems with it. But I think, I don't know if this will help you or anyone who doesn't like how the Mad Queen necessarily happened. It's kind of just like, it, it's that's who she is now. 
she is the Mad Queen, and we were probably going to get there anyway. So now just seeing how the rest plays out, I think I'm very intrigued by. Especially, I think, the smaller character moments. I don't think we have another battle in us. You know, even though I was kind of wrong about that, saying it was going to get smaller with the ending of Cersei. But I think that's the only way to end it right now, is to have John versus Daenerys. And just everything that surrounds that is going to be, I think, pretty interesting to watch. And it's going to be kind of surreal. And sitting down and watching, turning it on. And hearing and now the season finale, Game of Thrones. One final dun 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 dun. dun. That's gonna be be a tear moment before and after. Too bad they ruined the show. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs>